Hello, my name is Mark Thomas. I'm an old-time alternative comedian. And uh, in 2009, I attempted to walk the Israeli barrier in the West Bank, walking on both sides, trying to talk to as many people as possible, trying to find out a little bit about the conflict, but mainly rambling, getting from A to B. Uh, I've written a book about it, and I'm going to read you uh, a little bit. This bit is from... Um, it will be called The Introduction, but introductions put people off, so I've just called it Read This Now. Um, the notion of a hike in the West Bank arrived gently and without fuss one afternoon in 2009, but the transformation of the idea into an obsession was rapid and total. I even gave it a name, Walking the Wall. Time in the diary was set aside for Walking the Wall. My computer had a budget file with Walking the Wall, but most of all I talked a lot to people about Walking the Wall. The first person whose advice I saw was a friend of mine from my teenage years called Tony. Talking to him was essential, as he might live in Stoke Newington and have the usual worries of work and children, but he regularly goes on holiday to North Korea, and he recently took his 15-year-old son to the Mongolian plains where they lived off a diet of yak butter and went hunting with eagles. If he had said the idea was nuts, then I would have simply called it off. Unsurprisingly, Tony approves as we chat over a four mica table in the Charing Cross Road deli. Wearing three days worth of stubble, he slouches over a cappuccino, skimming the froth off with a teaspoon and slurping chocolate powder. How long is it? What? The walk. How long is the wall? Oh, very long. Very, very long? Yes. Hundreds of miles, I say. Oh, really? Yes, hundreds. Walkable hundreds. Walkable hundreds, he says. And then turns to me and says, do you think you'll bother finding out how long the wall is when you start the walk, or would you rather it a surprise? Different people have different reactions to the wall. Just as I expected Tony to react sympathetically, some of my family I suspected might not. My mum lives in a bungalow in Bournemouth and has her thermostat set two degrees above care home level. She is a devoted and wonderful woman who happens to read the Daily Mail and would be happier if all the clothes I take to the West Bank had little name tags with the words Mark Thomas Hostage sewn into them. By the time I settle for the airport, she has essentially written her television appeal for me and is quite excited about meeting Terry Waite. Others, friends, colleagues, people who have been in the same room as a Muslim in the past ten years, managed to discuss the trip without mentioning the words Al-Qaeda, gaffer tape and diet of hummus for five years. But no matter what their perspective, everyone I spoke to about this trip of walking the wall had advice. Usually it was about the walking aspect of it. A neighbour and geography teacher said to me, white spirit keeps your feet hard, as we chatted in the street. And a friend I'd travelled to India with and who sounds a little bit like a retired colonel said, two words, double socking. What? Double socking, that's how they got to the Arctic. Double socking, stops the rubbing. Everyone wanted to be helpful and encouraging, but usually had little, if any, practical knowledge of the West Bank. So what they did was, in their absence, they gave me hiking tips.